Hey, I'm Jeremy. I'm Neil. Kevin. We're a data member, and you're watching Loudwire. Hey everyone, Gruhamid here from Loudwire, and it's time for Wikipedia Factor Fiction, setting the record straight since Forever. like a month ago. Oh, 2008. Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Uh, today we've got Jeremy, Neil, and Kevin of A Day to Remember. Thank Hello. you guys so much for coming. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. All right. Uh, let's get right into it. Uh, on your Wikipedia page today, which I read, uh, and feel free to give a yes or no or elaborate if you'd like, uh, your original band name was End of an Era. But one day at band practice, Jeremy's girlfriend came up with a day to remember. False. False. Well, half true, half false. All right. We were end of an era for one day. Everyone hated it. Uh, and what actually happened was there was this guy who was forced into our band from our original drummer. Uh, we were going to have some tryouts. And this guy comes to our practice, even though we didn't want him to. He plays with us, we're nice about it, but he leaves his equipment when it's over. And we're like, why did he leave his equipment at my house? And our old drummer says, well, I told him he could be in the band. So you're we like, okay, thanks a lot. Four shows go by. He actually had the name and data to remember. And uh, yeah, we were like, that name's better. Let's just be called that. Played four shows with the guy, kicked him out, kept he, the name. He never actually finished the show. The last song he like broke he like threw his guitar in the air and would like spit on the crowd. It was weird. Wouldn't finish the last song so like, you know he never really We weren't just jerks about it, like he was legitimately awful. Yeah. So that actually parlays beautifully into my next question, which says, uh, an early member of the band was kicked out after several instances of him walking off stage mid performance. True, and that's the exact person we were talking that's about. That's one thousand percent correct. Not even a hundred. hundred times Damn. ten. I think that's He's spitting on people? Yeah. And like, there was like ten people there. <laughs> it's like, that's not cool. He like spit on the whole crowd. All ten of them. Just like watching us. I was one of them. I'm like, this is nasty and I hate this now. You guys are not good. That's what I thought. We weren't. I know. And because he spit on me. And you too. Yeah, I was in the crowd. I was I no. was the one that took he his place. He was at our first show. Yeah. Wow. All Fortunately. Right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. It's okay. I've showered once since then. Nice. Uh, with only one self-released EP, you guys embarked on a DIY tour that consisted of well over 200 shows. No. That doesn't sound really? correct. Really? No, false. They're not doing well. No, they're not. Th we Our first actual year of touring, we played over 200 shows. Okay. That is true. Not the first tour. First tour, we played seven shows all in Florida within about three hours of each other. And we used my dad's pickup truck as the vehicle. And Tom was straight edge then for the three days. The song 1958 was written about a temporary drummer who threatened to go to Jeremy's parents' house with a baseball bat. Correct. Yes, okay. that's true. 100% yeah, true. That is true. true. That's right. With ill intent, I'm sure. Yes. Why, why did, did he, he want to do that? Because we kicked him out, and he was just bitter, I guess. This isn't the spitting guy, is it? No. no. A different guy? Yeah. This guy was really bad, too. Like, <laughs> could, could not actually play drums. Um, could not get through a song. He's so, a cop. And we let him stay in the band for, like, half a year, and he even recorded an EP. We couldn't even use it, because he ruined it. Yeah. We ended up tossing it out and then redoing it with Bobby. Jeez. Yeah. Were you living with your parents at this time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... We were real young. Little did he know that Jeremy's dad is a skilled hunter slash marksman. <laughs> slash with martial a, artist. With a tree stand in the backyard. So yeah. if he would have fucked around, he would have got shot with a bow and arrow or a gun. Wow. Both. With a bow and arrow? Probably. Yeah. Did you say Oregon? Like the state? Yeah. Okay. Original guitarist Tom Denny left the band to focus on his marriage, family, and recording studio, although he intended to be a part of the band's songwriting still. Correct. Correct. All right. And he was on, he, he was on, I think, your, your third album? 
He's been on every one. He's been on all so, okay. Yeah, he doesn't credit him on all your albums on, on Wikipedia. So he has been a part of every one since. Every one, yeah. yeah. Even wow. the new one. He's in the credits of the albums, Yeah, whether it's okay. on there or not. Mm-hmm. He's crazy, and I love him. Yeah, he's fun. It was revealed in 2011 that you're involved with a le- in a legal dispute with Victory Records over unpaid royalties, and in response, you guys stated that you had no intention speaking publicly or disparagingly regarding the case. Uh, is that still true? Well, I mean, we didn't want to talk about it because there was nothing to talk about at the time. Yeah, we, we were trying to advertise that we were in a lawsuit because we don't really think that matters. Yeah, we're, we, we're banned, so that's what we talk about music and stuff like that. Right, because at the end of the day, our fans don't care about a lawsuit, and that's why we looked at it. I never gave a shit about people in lawsuits when I was a fan of their music. It's like, that's not why I like you. This kind of makes me feel like this is all disingenuine. Can yeah, we just weird. get back to music? That's why I like you. Yeah. So that was our whole approach. Uh, until we were forced to talk about it because he was trying to stop us from putting out the album, which forced us to have to talk about it publicly. And if there was ever anything bad to say, it was because he made us. Right. I mean, the story is a negative story. Yeah, and that's what I mean by that. It's not like... I say positive things about them, too. Yeah, I mean, without them, we wouldn't be where we are, so you can say that. Yeah, he he meaning Tony yeah. Rummel. The yeah. staff has always been really cool to us. Oh, of always. course. Okay. Yeah. He runs the show over there. Sure. Last one. Uh, this year, 2013, uh, Jeremy claimed that uh, that Tony Brummel uh, was he would threaten to end your career if you didn't go along with certain plans of his. Correct. But, so I think the, the the question after that is at what point. In your band's history, were you no longer uh, maybe afraid of having your career ended by an outside party? The October 8th. October 8th, when the album came out, there was no more fear of our career ending. Well, I mean, this had been going on for a long time. And when this all started, we were not the band we are today. You know, uh, we weren't we weren't making a living we were still investing in ourselves a lot. We were still traveling in a van, trying to just get gas money to get to the next stop. He never helped us with stuff like that. So we were solely running off of what we were making on tour, and that was it. Um, he never paid us a dime. And for somebody, when you're in that position to say, I'm going to end your career, he could have. So we were forced into doing whatever he would say because we could not afford to stand up for ourselves. And when we got to a point where we could afford it, we did. Do you, can you pinpoint where that point was exactly? When we did it. When you did it. Yeah, we would have done All it right. as soon. As, we did it as soon as we possibly could. All we right. would have done it the minute he started doing it if we could afford it, but we couldn't. We were just kids, and what was more important was just continuing building on. our career. Touring. And this can just happen whenever it happens, you know, in the background. That's the way we looked at it. 